Wonderful. Um, yeah, what are your plans for the future then? What are you working on now? What can we expect next? Can we work, oh, well, at the moment I'm working on, um, because the series is now finished, but I've got um, operations, kind of little short uh, books, kind of like novellas, so about 50, 50,000 words. Um, one of my books is Operation Snowdrop, and that's available if you go to forever-connect.com slash Operation Snowdrop, um, you can get it for free, folks, okay? Um, that is very much under the bullet type, um, slightly different kind of nuances. Um, it's a different style of writing. It's much more pacier, um, less kind of like um, flowing on the literature side. Uh, you really do feel you're under the bullet, that you're under under time, certainly Operation Snowdrop, uh, the kind of comments on the website, essentially, I really feel every second for this guy that's going through this. Um, I pick up which spy I'm going to be writing um, and I put that person into first person, so you really feel the emotion. And I have currently now, I'm writing Operation Oyster Catcher. Um, and that's going to be under first person under Sam Noor. So Sam Noor, um, it's set two years prior to the events in The Trusted. So it's going to be one of his key missions. Lots of tech, uh, lots of violence, lots of torture, lots of sex. Um, and that's all in the, in the first 20 pages. <laughs> Did you not? <laughs> Classic, yeah. <laughs> and the other thing I'm going to be doing is something completely different, and that's going to be um, kind of like a police procedural type thing, um, but a cold, cold case uh, set in uh, East Devon. So it's set in East Devon, um, kind of in the... Um, Let's say I haven't worked on it yet. I've got all kinds of things germinating in my mind at the moment. But it's essentially going to be a number of uh, shorter stories. And they're all going to be around this cold case. But there's going to be a running thread throughout all of them. And then you're going to find out something towards the end. And if I'm lucky, they're going to be... Um, actually based on real cold cases but I can't say any more than that okay because there's a lot of people I'm talking to and I can't say any more <laughs> it's going to be a very strong female character in it awesome. really strong DCI <laughs> strong female character perfect and yeah lots tech, and lots of tech just because it's cold cold cases doesn't mean to say it's not going to be tech it's going to be tech lots of tech lots of science as well because that is my signature yeah definitely don't don't hide that away yeah that's so exciting yeah i can't wait absolutely cool. absolutely no, and no, it's a kids book. say again it's a kids book oh okay it's it's a project i'm doing well i may be doing it depends if he actually feels like he wants to do it with my husband who's got an idea um, and it's it's a kids book and it will probably be maybe illustrated I don't know it's just something that I'm working on um, but it's really really cool it's going to be set in London there's going to be a spy element to it and it's going to be animals I mean, it's really going to be very, very different, very, very different from anything that I've ever written before. Um, and I, lots of people say to me, how do you write what you write? And I say, well, because I've still got the imagination of a kid. And I actually said this at a conference a few years ago about creative writing and stuff. I said, it's because I've tried to maintain the fact that I'm still a kid in here. It can drive my husband mad, actually. But... <laughs> But also, it gives me the opportunity to, to see if I can play around with that and actually make a kid's book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I may get pilloried by parents. <laughs> 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 I 
have to hold back on the uh, Bugs Bunny torture. <laughs> Quite a different readership, yeah, definitely. Different readership, yes. <laughs> no acid involved, guys. <laughs> acid drops. <laughs> Convert it to <laughs> child friendly. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That's really exciting. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, what advice would you have for new indie authors? What advice would I have? Well, I would say one of the first things you need to do is make sure you have a damn good cover. Okay. Okay. You need to look at the covers. You need to look at the um, kind of covers in your genre or genres or fused genres, whatever you're writing. I would say you need to have a look at what's hot in Amazon at the moment um, and really make sure that your cover matches or can be regarded as that kind of genre. So any reader will say, yeah, I know that that is immediately the, the kind of genre that I'm interested in. So that they don't need to have too much of a think about pressing the buy now. Mm -hmm. You need a good blurb. You need real good blurb. You need something to really catch the eye quickly. You need to think about how you are doing your advertising as well and target people. Target people that are reading the same kind of books that you're writing and also think about what else they're doing. So what TV programs, what's kind of films they like, that kind of thing. So you build up a total picture of who your readership could potentially be. Mm -hmm. And that's important. You need to build that archetype mm -hmm. so that you understand them, you get into their head, you know what works, what doesn't. I mean, yeah. I'm an expert at this, not by any means, um, because I'm still learning and believe it or not, because <laughs> It's actually quite funny and it's qu quite ironic because although I have been a marketeer and I've been a marketing director for some obscure reason last year, I, I didn't actually think that I needed to market that much. Um, but then I suddenly realised that I did. <laughs> yeah. it, it is important to actually make sure that your book is right for your genre so you're writing in trope you've got the right kind of things that the reader will actually expect to see um, so although I write cross genre I've got the whole kind of Whitehall uh, Pentagon White House kind of feel of it you know uh, I mean I understand that kind of thing because I've lived and breathed it in various ways kind of past incarnations. Um, so I understand that whole political thing, but I also understand the science and I also understand the whole kind of tradecraft elements. So you have to bring in all these elements mm -hmm. so that anybody reading my books who's purely read spy fiction will get spy fiction. Mm -hmm. And he's just written political, uh, or read, sorry, uh, political, will get the political feeling of it. You know, anybody's just written, uh, I keep saying written, read <laughs> sci-fi uh, uh, will immediately get the kind of like nuances around the sci-fi, the interdimensional elements, the, the whole kind of metaphysical elements, all that kind of stuff. It works. Mm -hmm. So although I have a fusion going on, the actual tropes there are strong. Yeah. Yeah, really immediately identifiable. Yeah, yeah. I think um, that's really important to bear in mind, especially because you know self-publishing is so accessible to everyone and a relatively easy process to go through. But so it's kind of easy to skim over, you know, book covers and uh, keywords and blurbs, and that's the really important stuff. And that's where you're going to stand out is by really taking the time to like invest time and energy into those things, right? You've got to. You've got to understand what your keywords are. You've got to understand what your readers are reading and looking at and thinking about and listening, whatever you know. I mean, I ha I have playlists as well. 
uh, mm -hmm. my created music playlists, which is another kind of marketing tool, really. Yeah. Uh, but I've got complete playlists of songs that reflect every single book. So yeah. from the trusted all the way through to the sun, there's a playlist that actually reflect different scenes from chapters. So you can look at that playlist and you can almost get the book immediately. Because you think, okay, right, you've got Traitor there, you've got, you know, girls just want to have fun. Mm -hmm. That's from the resonance, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great thing to do. Yes, yeah, Richard wants to do a playlist for a book. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And after having read the book, you can I can go through that playlist and be like, oh, that's for that moment. Yeah. Or that chapter. It's it's really cool. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, nice. It works. That really does work because it, it's, it's about creating the intrigue in people. Mm -hmm. Because if you're a new indie author, people have to take a chance on you, you know? Um, and you have to set that intrigue there. You have to get people to actually click buy now because they're intrigued. Yeah. And that's what you have to generate. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Mish. Okay. <laughs> I hope that really helps people because, you know, we need more and more indie authors out there. There's a lot of people out there that have got a story to tell. Don't pontificate about it. Just yeah. a pen and write or hit a keyboard and start writing. You've yeah. got a story in you, let it out. Great, great advice. Brilliant. Yeah, really great insights. Really exciting to talk about, uh, yeah, the existing Trusted Thriller series and also what's coming next. So, yeah, just brilliant. Thank you so much. No problem. Happy, happy, happy to be here and to, you know, to uh, have the time to uh, talk to you, my darling. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Mish. Take Cheers. care. Bye now.